Happy to see you again. We are joined, as always, by Greg Engert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, a James Beard Award nominee. The group includes Where We Are, Church Key, Downstairs, Birch and Barley. You've also got uh, Columbia Firehouse and Vermilion and Old Town. Greg, it is always good to see you. You too, Brennan. Now, if we look a little darker than normal today, I know that's a bonus. <laughs> it's the hottest day of the year at the moment, I think, in the district, and we're leaving the blinds down over here yep. at Church Key so the place doesn't get to be 100 degrees too. It's warm. What is on tap this week? Well, this week is a special treat that you actually retrieved for us. Um, it is Laertes, a very rare um, draft and bottle release from our friends at Penn Druid Brewing out in Sperryville, Virginia. I believe you stopped by last weekend. Sunday, yeah, very cool place. Very cool, very the cool. Carney brothers out there, Van and Jennings and Lane are really great great people you know they're also musicians they have a, a band called Pontiac which, I, I bet they're good they are I mean, they're if, they're, awesome. if they're as good a musicians as they are friendly guys uh, then it would be worth listening to and brewers it, yeah and um, brewers Trifecta. so this is a really special treat now uh, caveat emptor you cannot find these bottles at stores and you only see draft sparingly largely at events that we host um, which is very nice of them but uh, you know like they'll be sending beer for Snally Gaster coming up in the fall that's only about two months away um, however, it is a short trip, really, to get out there. Yeah. There's lots going on. Shenandoah, in at Little Washington. Uh, Copper Fox Distilleries right across the way. Yeah. And I believe that they're going to be released. They haven't announced the date yet, but bottles of Laertes are going to be coming out at the end of July. So definitely. And they were kind enough to send a bottle with me for Beer of the Week. So cheers and thanks, guys. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious, delicious stuff. There they, really they is. Do, they, have, they had a blonde on tap too. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, this, I, I don't know if that, I can't remember the name of what else was on tap, but I had one of those, some friends had these and I tried this and just so good. So Perfect good. tang. Really tangy, crisp, very refreshing, bone dry, about 6.8% alcohol, it's called Laertes. And what's really great about Pandruid is, I mean, they're singular. There's no brewery like them, certainly in the mid-Atlantic, and you'd be hard pressed to find something like them uh, further afield. Uh, you know, they, they, they brew outside, first of all. Uh, they drag their stuff out and they brew outside. They mash in an oak tons. Uh, they have a wood fired kettle. They use a 50 year old wells water that's relatively hard. You know, they don't, uh, they don't sanitize their brewery. They're relying on airborne and oak borne uh, yeast and bacteria to do a lot of the fermentation. Um, when they do pitch yeast, it's yeast that they've cultured from flowers around their. Um, property. Um, they have souring bacterias in different barrels, um, uh, one of which um, is all local bacteria that they've also cultured. That's what they use in this. I mean, so really a throwback. They're starting to do more and more spontaneous beer. Uh, throwback to old rustic brewing days where there's still a lot of art and control though, because you know, it's one thing to just let, let things go crazy. Yeah. It's another to um, guide your beer um, among the elements to get to something as delicious and, and composed as this. And they uh, had a hell of a weekend last weekend. They had six beers on draft and ran out of four of them. Now, maybe they wouldn't want me to say that, but I think that illustrates uh, the quality of the beer and the uh, desire which people totally. have to drink it. Absolutely. And you know, they're extremely small. I mean, they're brewing in a, a very small scale. Like I said, they also are full, they're not, you know, they're kind of full-time musicians that, that tour a lot. Um, and so there's one now, I will, but I will say, and I think we just, we talked about this before we started. It's like, even if I went out there and they only had one beer, yeah. the beer is great and it's amazing. It's always delicious, but the experience of being out there, it's just such a wonderful um, setup and place to be. Uh, certainly reinforces the fact that like, drinking is as much atmospheric as it is about what's in the glass sometimes. I mean, it's beautiful. A lot of room to run around outside, a deck. They don't serve food. You can bring your own food in. Cool. They're happy to have you do that. What would you pair this with? What should you bring? To, if you well, don't bring a bottle home, that's what should yeah. you bring to eat at Pendruid? I hadn't thought of it that way. I well, was thinking either, more about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> to me, this is like the, the most perfect, like fresh seafood beer. I mean, you think about Viognier and bright white wine characteristics. This certainly has it. Ceviche, oysters, clams, shrimp, simply grilled fish, crab cakes would be fantastic. And then, uh, those kinds of white wines also lend themselves really well to like Vietnamese food and I would just be killer with this like pho, banh mi, spring rolls, 
Um, simple spicy beef preparations from Thai would be awesome as well. Chinese sushi, I mean anything so, so like good. you say. Yeah, yeah. So. Ah, well, that was stuff. that was a lot of fun. Thanks again to uh, guys. to the brothers for having uh, for sending this on our way so we could share it with people. And uh, yeah, if you're headed out to that area or make a point to make a special trip, I, I think you'll find it well worth it. Cool. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.